Welcome to part two, where we look at fiber characterization and transmission issues. Light transmission in optical fiber uses three basic elements, a transmitter, a receiver, and a transmission medium that passes the signal from one to the other. The use of optical fiber introduces attenuation and dispersion into the system. Attenuation tends to increase the power requirements of the transmitter in order to meet the power requirements of the receiver. Dispersion, on the other hand, limits the bandwidth of the data that can be transmitted over the fiber. As the light signal traverses the fiber, it decreases in power level. The decrease in power level is expressed in decibels, dB, or as a rate of loss per unit distance, decibels per kilometer. The two main loss mechanisms of light transmission in optical fiber are light absorption and scattering. With light absorption, light is absorbed in the fiber material as its energy is converted to heat due to molecular resonance and wavelength impurities. For example, hydrogen and hydroxide resonance occurs at approximately 1244 and 1383 nanometers. Scattering, primarily Rayleigh scattering, also contributes to attenuation. It causes dispersion of the light energy in all directions with some of the light escaping the fiber core, but a small portion of this light energy is returned down the core and is termed backscattering. Forward light scattering, Raymond scattering, and backward light scattering, Bruin scattering, are two additional scattering phenomena that can occur in optical materials under high power conditions. For a fiber optic span, the effects of passive components and connection losses must be added to the inherent attenuation of the fiber in order to obtain the total signal attenuation. This attenuation, or loss, for a given wavelength is defined as the ratio between the input power and the output power of the fiber being measured. It is generally expressed in decibels dB. Microbends and macrobends are common problems in installed cable systems because they can induce signal power loss. Microbending occurs when the fiber core deviates from the axis and can be caused by manufacturing defects, mechanical constraints during the fiber laying process, and environmental variations, temperature, humidity, or pressure during the fiber's lifetime. Several factors can contribute to microbending induced loss including glass non-uniformity at the core cladding boundary and polymer coating irregularities, as well as packaging, installation, and environmental effects. A macro bend is a bend or loop in the fiber with a radius of curvature of several millimeters or more, and this effect is to cause power to be lost from the core and thereby induce additional loss. Macro bends are encountered in splice cases, termination cabinets, or any other point where the fiber encounters sharp bends or turns. As stated, the total path attenuation between the transmitter and receiver is the summation of the loss contributors. Scattering, source to fiber coupling, micro bending, macro bending, and interconnection. The effect of source to fiber coupling occurs only once at the front end of a system whereas the total scattering in microbending terms, decibels per kilometer, continuously erode this coupled power as a function of length. Macrobending loss is dependent on the installation environment, and the interconnection loss depends on the number of connections in the link. When these loss contributors are summed, the total link loss is a function of length and the number of connections. Hence, different fiber designs will optimize attenuation for different network configurations. The challenge is to choose a fiber with good performance over a wide range of system characteristics which satisfies both the present objectives and future upgradability requirements. Of the four attenuation factors, the susceptibility to bending induced losses provides the most distinction between fiber designs for single mode systems. Differences in scattering losses among designs are small on the order of tenths of a decibel per kilometer. Similarly, with the present much improved connector and splice technology, which is capable of consistently producing interconnection losses of 0.3 dB or less, the practical difference in connector and splice losses among the fiber designs are small. Another factor that affects the signal during transmission is dispersion, which reduces the effective bandwidth available for transmission. Three main types of dispersion exist, modal dispersion, MD, chromatic dispersion, CD, and polarization mode dispersion, PMD. 
The bandwidth of the fiber determines the maximum rate at which information can be transmitted through the network and can be divided into two main components, modal and chromatic, both of which contribute to the total bandwidth. Crosstalk does not occur in the fiber itself as the bandwidth of fibers is mainly limited by their dispersion. Depending whether it is single or multi-mode, the system performance is determined to different degree by the combined effects of modal and chromatic dispersion. For single-mode systems, other factors such as polarization, modal dispersion, and nonlinear effects must be considered, but these are more apparent for long-distance transmission systems. Modal dispersion typically occurs with multi-mode fiber, where a very short light pulse is injected into the fiber within the numerical aperture, all of the energy does not reach the end of the fiber simultaneously. A mode can be considered as the path that a light ray follows when traveling through the fiber, and each carries a quantity of optical energy. Different modes of oscillation carry the energy using paths of different lengths. So, for example, a multimode fiber with a 50 micron core may have up to 300 modes. This pulse spreading by virtue of different light path lengths is called modal dispersion, or more simply, multimode dispersion. Eventually, two pulses will merge together and cannot then be distinguished from each other. A single-mode fiber does not have modal dispersion since only one mode will be propagated through the fiber. Chromatic dispersion, CD, occurs because a light pulse is made up of different wavelengths, each traveling at different speeds down the fiber. These different propagation speeds broaden the light pulse when it arrives at the receiver, reducing the signal-to-noise ratio, SNR, and increasing bit errors. Chromatic dispersion is caused by material dispersion and waveguide dispersion. By changing the refractive index profile in the fiber core, both the waveguide and chromatic dispersion can be changed. Optical pulses with many spectral components will spread when traveling through a fiber, and this will limit the bandwidth of the transmission line. The only way to minimize pulse broadening is to use a light source with a very narrow spectrum, the laser diode, and to modify the refractive index profile of the fiber to minimize chromatic dispersion at a certain wavelength. The zero dispersion wavelength expressed in nanometers is defined as a wavelength with a chromatic dispersion equal to zero. Operating at this wavelength does not exhibit chromatic dispersion, but typically presents issues arising from the optical nonlinearity and the four-wave mixing effect in DWDM systems. The slope at this wavelength is defined as the zero dispersion slope. Both the dispersion coefficients standardized to one kilometer and the slope are dependent on the length of the fiber. Chromatic dispersion primarily depends on the manufacturing process, so cable manufacturers have to consider these effects when designing different types of fiber for different applications and different needs, such as standard fiber G652, dispersion shifted fiber G653, or non-zero dispersion shifted fiber G655 or 656. With negative dispersion, the reddish light travels faster, and with positive dispersion, the bluish light travels faster. The pointer wavelength at which the minimum dispersion occurs is known as the fiber's minimum dispersion wavelength. In the past, this is the wavelength at which the laser transmission was sent because there was the least spreading of the light pulses over long distances. As we will see, in some cases it is to our advantage to transmit at other than the fiber's zero dispersion wavelength. Polarization mode dispersion, PMD, is a basic property of single mode fiber that affects the magnitude of the transmission rate. PMD results from the difference in propagation speeds of the energy of a given wavelength, which is split into two polarization axes perpendicular to each other as shown in the diagram. The main causes of PMD are non-circularities of the fiber design and externally applied stresses on the fiber. Other causes of polarization mode dispersion within a fiber can be either intrinsic or extrinsic. Intrinsic means that the PMD is innate in the fiber and was caused during the fiber's manufacturing process, such as imperfections in the fiber's geometry or stresses that are within the fiber. Extrinsic means that the PMD is due to a physical stress in the fiber after it has been manufactured, such as twisting, bending, or an external induced stress. 
High power level and small effective area of long-haul single-mode fiber systems mainly cause what are known as nonlinear effects. With an increase in the power level and the number of optical channels, nonlinear effects can become problematic factors in transmission systems. These effects are dependent upon the nonlinear portion of the refractive index and cause it to increase for high signal power levels. Behind an erbium doped fiber amplifier or EDFA, the high output can create nonlinear effects such as four wave mixing, FWM, self phase modulation, SPM, and cross phase modulations, XPM. We will look more fully at these later in the lesson. In digital transmission, the in lane problem, too much dispersion, is the spreading of pulses that causes bit errors. Here, the light from the 1s disperses into the bit period of the 0 to the extent that the receiver mistakes the 0 for a 1, a bit error. At this point, either regeneration of the signal or compensation for dispersion is required. On the other hand, too little dispersion allows the photons from signals in different channels, the cross-lane problem, to interfere with each other, a phenomenon called four-wave or four-photon mixing FWM, and creates unwanted byproducts as shown here. These byproducts cause two problems. One, they rob power from the main signals, a minor problem, and two, they can be situated at a signal wavelength and cause interference or crosstalk. Here you can see unevenly spaced signal wavelengths to illustrate the FWM mixing, but real systems have evenly spaced wavelengths where the unwanted byproducts would interfere directly. Four wave mixing or FWM is an interference phenomenon that produces unwanted signals from three signal frequencies known as ghost channels that occur when three different channels induce a fourth channel. There are several ways this can happen, so let's look at two of the most common. Due to high power levels and depending on the number of actual signal channels, FWM effects produce ghost channels, some of which overlap the actual signal channels. For example, a 4-channel system will produce 24 and a 16-channel system will produce 1920 unwanted ghost channels. Therefore, FWM is one of the most adverse nonlinear effects in DWDM systems. In systems using dispersion shifted fiber, FWM becomes a tremendous problem when transmitting around 1550 nanometers or the zero dispersion wavelength. Different wavelengths traveling at the same speed or group velocity and at a constant phase over a long period of time will increase the effects of FWM. In standard fiber, non-dispersion shifted fiber, a certain amount of chromatic dispersion occurs around 1550 nanometers, leading to different wavelengths having different group velocities, reducing the FWM effects. Using irregular channel spacing can also achieve a reduction in these effects too. Self-phase modulation, or SPM, is the effect that a signal has on its own phase, resulting in signal spreading. With high signal intensities, the light itself induces local variable changes in the refractive index of the fiber, known as the Kerr effect. This phenomenon produces a time-varying phase in the same channel. The time-varying refractive index modulates the phase of the transmitted wavelengths, broadening the wavelength spectrum of the transmitted optical pulse. The result is a shift toward shorter wavelengths at the trailing edge of the signal, blue shift, as well as a shift toward longer wavelengths at the leading edge of the signal, red shift. The wavelength shifts that SPM causes are the exact opposite of positive chromatic dispersion. In advanced network designs, SPM can be used to partly compensate for the effects of chromatic dispersion. Cross-phase modulation XPM is the effect that a signal in one channel has on the phase of another signal. Similar to self-phase modulation, XPM occurs as a result of the Kerr effect. However, XPM effects only arise when transmitting multiple channels on the same fiber. In XPM, the same frequency shifts at the edges of the signal in the modulated channel occur as in SPM, spectrally broadening the signal pulse. This plot shows the attenuation and dispersion of the various types of single-mode fiber. The attenuation is on the left axis and the dispersion is on the right axis. The units of dispersion are measured in picoseconds per nanometer-kilometer. 
This means it's the delay time in picoseconds when one nanometer width of light is transmitted one kilometer and is the total time from when the light began to be received to when it finished being received. Fiber type G.652 both matched and depressed clad has the zero dispersion wavelength at 1310 nanometers which is the wavelength at which it is usually used. Fiber type G.653, dispersion shifted, has its zero dispersion wavelength at 1550 nanometers, and again, this is the wavelength at which it is usually used. The other G.655 fiber, non-zero dispersion shifted, has a small amount of dispersion at 1550 nanometers. We mentioned erbium-doped fiber amplifiers, or EDFAs, and these usually operate in the lowest loss region of an optical fiber, the 1550 nanometer window. That completes Part 2. Please continue on to Part 3. Thank you.